Hi there everyone, my name's Dave West, I hope we're all doing well. So welcome to this video tutorial guide on how to get the best from the Nightcap application on your iPhone. I've noticed lately a lot more people are getting into some form of mild astrophotography. Uh, obviously more people are at home and there's also less pollution in the air because of less cars and vehicles on the road. And that means we get some really awesome clear skies when there's no cloud cover. A little bit of cloud cover is okay because you can still get some good shots with that. But when it's a really clear night, the stars look absolutely amazing. The clearest I've seen in many, many years. And those of you who follow me on Twitter, you'll no doubt see uh, some of the photos that I posted of the night sky from our back garden, for example. So I have noticed a lot of people uh, when they're posting on Twitter have said, oh, I wasn't quite sure of the settings or this photo's blurry uh, or I didn't know how to set up my phone to actually do it. So this is a very easy to follow guide and it helps you to just understand how to make some very quick tweaks in the application before you take the photo to get the very best results. So I won't bore you with all the details of Nightcap. I'll leave the link in the description and you can go and check it out in your own time. It is a paid application, but if you're serious about taking pictures of the night sky, then it is an absolute must have. It's a brilliant application and well worth the investment if you're gonna be uh, spending time taking pictures of the sky. So let's dive into the uh, screen recording tutorial then, and I'll show you what settings I used. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you some tips on how to tweak your photos with the iPhone's built-in photo editor to really get the most out of the image. All right, so before I go any further, the most obvious thing is to make sure your phone is steady. Uh, so the use of a tripod is preferable, but if needs must, if you haven't got a tripod, you could always lean your phone against something solid like a wall or even a shoe. As long as the phone is angled up towards the sky and it's completely steady, then that will make sure you get the best results because any movement will result in streaks in the image. Uh, so the first thing then to make sure of is that you go to the options, which if your phone is in portrait mode, which means just stood up as you would normally hold it, then the options are in the bottom left hand corner. It's a little star. Or if you've got the phone in landscape mode, which I've got now, then the options are in the bottom right hand corner. It's a little star. If you just click on it, it then brings up these options that you can see on the screen here. Uh, now there's various options, but for the most part, uh, the most popular one at the moment is ISS mode. And this basically just holds the uh, exposure open. It's just a basically long shutter option. When you click the button, it just takes a really, really long photo, uh, which only stops when you press the stop recording button. So ISS mode is obviously the one that we're looking for. So once you've got your framing correct on your photo, uh, what you'll first need to do is make sure that the bright mode is off uh, on the options. So I'll show you what that is now. Uh, so if I just fast forward to this screen recording. So you can see there at the bottom of the screen, I've got the ISS mode activated, but if you look at the bottom, there's a picture of, it looks like the sun, and we've got the green light on it. What you need to make sure is that is switched off. Basically, the iPhone is locked at an ISO of 2102. That is locked by Apple in software. When you click that picture of the sun, what it does, you can see at the top of the screen, it lifts the ISO to 4224, which is actually more than what the iPhone can actually handle. So what it's basically doing is just adding artificial exposure into the image, which can also introduce a lot of noise. So my tip is to switch that off and that'll get you the best looking image overall at the end. So before we change any of the values, which you can see around the edges of the screen there, uh, what I did on this particular shot is because the moon was quite bright, uh, if you click on that and then just press and hold the square, what that does is lock the exposure so that moon will never change or get overly bright. And then what you've got around the edges of the screen then, as you can see here, you've got the white balance, got ISO on the left-hand side, focus across the bottom, and then exposure on the right-hand side. So what you can do then is use your finger and then move up and down around each edge of the screen in order to get the best results. You can see with the exposure, you can move that up and down as you see fit. Uh, now this is basically down to personal preference. Uh, you can see I set mine to about, about one third and that was absolutely fine. So I can just see the, the trees at the bottom of the screen there. So next thing to do then is change the focus. You can see I've slid from left to right there. Uh, if I just show you the example, if I go all the way left, the trees go out of focus. And then if I go all the way right, what that does then, it means that you're setting the focus to infinity, which is the best thing to do because it means you get a really crisp view of the stars when you take the photo. If you're allowed to do autofocus or you do you go too far left, what you're going to end up with is with a, a blurry image. Now with the ISO, uh, I actually move that all the way up to the right, all the way up to the top, sorry. So you just click on the left hand side of the screen and push up and that will then lift the ISO to the highest value, which is 2102. 
So that's the application all set up and ready to go. All you need to do now is just wait and then you just click the shutter and then you'll get the exposure. What I would do is, as best practice, is just to get out into your garden or wherever you're going to be around about 10 or 15 minutes early so you can get yourself all set up, the framing right, all of the settings right, and then you know as soon as you hit the shutter key, you're going to get the best possible image. Now, what I would say is, is don't hit the shutter button too early because anything past the minute, you will start to see star trails. That's basically where you can start to see the curvature of the stars as the Earth rotates. So as soon as you see the dot in the distance, click the shutter button and then you'll get the really cool effect, which I'll show you in a moment. So I fast forwarded the video now to the actual time when the ISS passes over. Uh, so I will just scrub through the video, just make it a little bit quicker. So if you look at the bottom of the display, so if you look at the bottom middle square, so just towards the top of the square near the line, you can just start to see the ISS passing through. Uh, with the long exposure, when, as you leave the shutter open, you just get this really cool line. Now, I know it's only a line, and it may not seem that spectacular to some of you, but I think these are really cool digital memories to have because these aren't things that we'll may be able to see uh, later on. Uh, the skies are really clear at the moment, but obviously as things start to get back to normal, it may not be the case. But you can see that you just get this really cool effect as the ISS comes past the camera. So once it's finished, you can then press the recording button and that will then stop. And then you can use the image as it is, or you can then go and edit it just to give it a little bit more punch if you want to, which is what I'll show you now. So just find the image in your photo roll and then click on the edit button at the top right hand side or it would be at the bottom right if you're holding the phone in portrait orientation. So you can use Apple's built-in auto function. That doesn't actually add a lot to the image. So what I'm gonna do is just fine tune it manually. So you've just got some basic adjustments here like exposure, brilliance, highlight, shadows, etc. So all we're gonna concentrate on is just some basic adjustments just to get the most out of this image. So first of all, I'm gonna use exposure. So just increase that. So we're seeing a bit more of the sky and the stars. And then we've got highlights. So again, we can increase those just to get more out of the whites of the stars and the streak of the space station passing over. We've then got shadows. So again, we can increase those just a bit. So we're just getting a bit more of the sky in the shots. And uh, with contrast, if we reduce that, then we're ex exposing more of the sky because what basically happens is, if I just move that back, you get dark corners on the image basically because of the vignetting of the lens because obviously the lens is round uh, on the outside of the phone. You can sometimes get like a shadow around each corner of the, the image. So if you just decrease the contrast a bit, that then brings out more of the sky. So that's the finished edit of the image. Again, they're very simple touches that you can make just to bring out more of the photo. And then you can use that to share or keep on your phone to show friends or family later on. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial then. I do hope for those of you who are using Nightcap and weren't quite sure how to use it or get the best results, I hope that you found this helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, then please leave those down in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so there's more content like this coming on this channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my tips and tutorial video on how to get the best results from Nightcap on your iPhone. My name is Dave West and I will catch you guys later.